It's time for Money 101, not just for your college student, perhaps, but also for you, the parent, uh, how to get ready financially for college. Stuart Welch, financial planner with the Welch Group, joins us, as he does every Tuesday. It's good to see you. Good morning, Rick. Thanks so much for being with us today. Okay, this is that time where there's a lot of independence for the college student, but there's also a lot of risk of getting in debt and all of those other things that go along with college. Well, I think, you know, when when uh, uh, when kids, high school kids head off to college for the first time, <laughs> it is quite an experience. You know, it's the first time they're really totally on their own. Uh, they have to decide to get up in the morning. They have to make all the decisions themselves. And uh, sometimes they make great decisions, sometimes maybe not so great. Uh, we, we saw moving in a uh, day for incoming freshmen last, uh, over the weekend for UAB. So let me throw this out. Hopefully this conversation has been had with some of them. But if it hasn't, it's still need to sit down and start with a budget. Talk about a budget with your, with your college student, right? Well, I think here's the key point. Most uh, kids go through college and, you know, and the parents hope they get a great education and can get a job and a job that can allow them to, you know, to grow and, and financially grow as well. But what doesn't happen in college in most cases is anything financial. The parents are just typically writing the checks and paying for everything. Child graduates heads out into the real world and he finds out, wow, I have no skills in terms of money management. So I want to use this as an opportunity. Okay, so you set up that budget, but you also say go on and give them the money. Set up a joint account as well. That's right. So you set, you, you first of all, do the budget with the child. Mm -hmm. Let them be involved in yeah. deciding what they're going to spend. And then you open up a joint account and then you fund it. Now, I would only fund it maybe a month or a quarter at a time mm -hmm. to see how they're going to do. Uh, but actually give them the money, and now they're going to be responsible for paying all their bills. You also say be a good coach through this process. Don't just give them the money and say, see you in a quarter when, I, when, when we talk about the check again. Well, I think, uh, you know, if you think of your great, the, the, any coach that you admire and you think of the characteristics, what you think about is them being an encourager, someone who's very supportive, as opposed to a lot of times parents will be kind of critical mm -hmm. as, soon, as soon as they make a mistake. And that's not what you want. You want this to be a good learning experience. But you also want them to be encouraged to help out as well. Well, find an income, a revenue source that they can put in there as well, right? Well, you know, my experience has been is that the children that actually help fund their own college have a much greater appreciation for their education than if the parents just give them a total free ride. So let them work either while they're in school or on summers, and they can use that to maybe fund their their play money, or maybe they can use it to help pay for school. Uh, finally, you also say have them set goals during this process as well, and you say that can have a long or a wide-ranging uh, impact on the way they look at money in the future. Great Harvard study done over decades. Uh, uh, Four percent of these graduates actually set goals. They ended up with more wealth than the remaining uh, graduates combined. And so what the point is, is setting goals is going to get you ahead. Learn to set goals early. All right, Stuart, good to see you as always. Thanks so much. Thanks, Rick. Uh, more to come on Good Day Alabama. Your kids create